Okay, a couple of days ago, I Tom gave us an introduction about what we do. We're basically a research and development facility for, for sustainable living, if you may, with the experiment being what can you do with modern technology in terms of using local resources effectively, and STEAM is part of that. Now, um, Will and I were talking last night, um, inspired after the, the trials, and the best metaphor we came is, is that we're like the Amish on crack. Modern day. Okay. okay, so here's the program that will validate that. You like this sun? Okay, so we mentioned about 40 different technologies that, that we're working on, and so here's a little package of about six or so of them that contribute to the energy part. So, uh, like we mentioned about the tractor, we built a prototype of that, we built a full product release of the compressed earth brick press, here are some of the other toys. So, uh, we start with, uh, okay, so the sun that feeds your, your biomass crop, okay? From the biomass crop, build a pelletizer. So you have your pelletizer, you go to your gasifier then, so you've got a burner, you have a gasifier for the pelletized biomass, gasifier burner, move on to the heat exchanger, move on to your steam engine, and then you can power things like the tractor. And in fact, if all were to go well, right now we're working on a one kilowatt stationary power generator. Now, if that works out, we can go as simple as put that one kilowatt steam engine on the tractor. Now, the tractor is hydraulic, so you can put on an itty-bitty hydraulic pump and make this thing go about maybe one-third of a mile per hour at the time of trials. We might try that. Okay. <laughs> so, so now the, the work, um, about... A month ago, I went to the Northwest Missouri Steam and, and Gas Engine Show. Um, let's show the, the hit and miss. I was kind of inspired by the hit and miss engine. It's a gasoline engine. And it's the stuff that brought electric, well, power, I don't know about electricity, but definitely power to the farmer early on in this century. Are you familiar with this? It's a hit and miss, meaning that in this clip of about four seconds, it hits like once. So. I was thinking, wow, that is simple. It's almost like a, appropriate technology. What if you do this on steam and use modern, some modern technology of steam? So you eliminate all this complex linkage mechanism for the spark mechanism there. Uh, so what if we made a steam engine like this that's just got a big cylinder, and now with modern technology, just a simple microcontroller and a solenoid valve, which is a we comment about that. <laughs> but that would allow you, why, why are, could someone be excited about a simple solenoid valve and a controller? Where the controller itself, you might think, oh, that's all getting complicated, but if it's an open source, there are open source controllers out there that you can read all about, learn about, them, like the STAMP, or there's another one we use, which is Arduino. Well, it would allow you infinite cutoff control, and speed issues would, would not be the case if you're firing like every five revolutions or something. Well, so so say you're you've got like a 300 <laughs> RPM engine, maybe four inch bore, like four inch stroke or something, and therefore it's totally easy to control. Now, since then we found out maybe that this may not be so efficient because uh, you're losing a lot of heat if you're so okay many issues so. We move on. Of course, we have the greatest invention here, and then we met some people at the steam show. So, so yesterday, uh, so Carl started to discuss. Carl and I, uh, we're going to get together, uh, and the concept is let's let's make this one kilowatt simple stationary generator work. So we started to talk about that, and we're going to get together now. Since we work along in the open source development lines. What that means is that we'll draw up a proposal, meaning um, Carl, Carl were, and I were talking about just getting some CAD drawings, just all the specifications, and define the product clearly, 
and get it funded like what we do is we, we put our information out on the internet like Will's taking the video right now. We can block this, um, post this on the internet and say, okay, here's this product. Whoever is a stakeholder, chip in to make it happen. We could raise a few thousand bucks and just build it, say for the design phase, then just build it and so forth. So we do know that, I mean, I get asked tons of times about this kind of concept of just a simple basic generator, um, and I think Steam could absolutely do it. Peltized biomass is a, absolutely a definite candidate. And then, of course, getting back to the Amish, I would say that uh, just about any Amish person would like to have something like that. They pres Well, they presently use diesel engines, you see. What if this was a real option for them? Well, that could be a, a possible huge market, and, and probably I would say maybe like a million people in the United States, people who are kind of trying to get back to the land or live simply, they would probably appreciate that and, and appreciate not having to burn your cheap China generators that run on gasoline and if someone thinks about the geopolitics involved with that, your values, you could think differently about that. And certainly the, secure, the fuel security, the independence on the fuel is a big selling point. Okay, so so what are we trying, what are some of the specifications? Because what, what I'm saying here is that we're going to get together, tap all the info from this club, and actually I plan on, in this, go ahead. I just have, to, I yeah. have to say, one, one of the things, one of the things that we run across that I didn't mention in mind is uh, net, net power. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, if you take if you take your how much power are you using to palletize? How much power are you using for the gasification? You know, mm -hmm. so to get your net result of one kW. So yeah. if it takes you five to get there, then you have you know, you you don't have you have a negative net result. Well, for palletization, you would probably spend about five gallons of fuel to produce the equivalent of about 500 gallons of fuel. So the numbers are extremely good over there. As far as gasification, that's a that's a self-running process. So that's all I'm, I'm just yeah. saying, you know, just be very, very yeah, aware absolutely. of that because that's, like I said, one of the things that we, we have run into all the time. Everybody yeah. knows about the Browns gas. Which is, right, which is, which is, you know, and I say, well, what's your net? You know, because even at net, uh, your power out, then what's the net efficiency of your steam engine? Right. You know, right. so it, there's... And that comment would apply very much so to algae, for example, mm -hmm. which you have to, I mean, for the more complex processes, uh, Harry was saying that it costs like up to $8 per gallon. Did you say that? No, I didn't have anybody say that. Okay. Maybe the chemical... You mentioned $1... To some other number there, there's per a gallon. tractor, a company that we're also involved with, United uh, Fuels, Unified Fuels, and they, they built the extractor. And they want to use our engine because the engine can run off the gases that it produces. Yeah. Yeah, see, so you have, uh, uh, they can make the fuels, process the fuel from the algae, okay, no fuel cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so definitely that's a, that's a question to ask. Um, on a pelletized biomass, that would be quite low. That, that, that is favorable. So, what are the... Her, her comment is right on. With the switchgrass, the corn alcohol, uh -huh. the negative energy balance of the total disaster. But then you can look at good stuff like the olive pits, high in oil, high in fuel, the cherry pits, the peach pits, all these industrial or agricultural wastes they are very good fuel. Olive pits are the best for the high energy density. And they have positive, uh, inputs because they can go right into any existing telephone, uh -huh. ram, screw, feed, burner. So yeah, watching watching your energy balance is extremely important. And anything with a negative energy balance is environmental and economic suicide. Yeah. Okay, Harry. You, you got two uh, two lessons that you learned here also. I think you ought to take really really good notice of, and that's styling and burning fuel right from a log. Tom, Tom has brought both of those to the front, you know, the styling on the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I think. Why go through all the process? You I, see what he did? He's creating energy just from the biomass. There you go. Yeah. You don't have to go through all the steps. Now, you know, they were making 
gas, the only reason for gasification, now this is cryostatic uh, burning, that you can burn garbage indirectly, you can take the gas right off the bar garbage, and and because it, it preheats the garbage, yeah. uh, and then it produces the gas, and then you can burn a clean gas coming off. Uh, but the reason they built syngas to begin with is to run in an internal combustion engine. But then they found out all the glycerins and all the other kind of stuff, and then they had to have all these scrubbers on the gaskets. It was eating up the turbos and the piston rings and getting 200 hours out of a diesel engine. So we said, well, they were taking garbage, dumping it in a pit, drying it, and then they're taking and pelletizing it, and then they're gasifying it, going through all the extractors to get to a diesel engine. But it's all they had to do is do like Tom's doing, burn the garbage. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to... Are you here to usher me out? No. Okay. I'm here to defend myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say, uh, anybody that does wood burning stoves, the EPA starts talking about catalytic converters in the, in the pipes and all that. Yeah. Are you aware of that one? Yeah. Uh, not so much. Yeah. yeah. Can't buy it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can't buy a wood stove without a catalytic converter. So I'm just saying, okay. pretty much that, yeah. that that's all starting to play now. Yeah. I mean, that's in the, in the public. In the, yeah, I understand. I mean, the people who are. You know, no, no, I'm, I'm yeah. just saying that that you you go down a road and then yeah. all of a sudden when right. you you say well the EPA is going to be there or this is going to be there right. you just have to watch out for those. It's going to be yeah, it's a constant game. Yep. Now, what's the program here? Just this is important. Um, between December and February, I'm going to get on a road and visit as many of you as possible, and I'll I'll use uh, Tom's help and others' help to organize a little itinerary of important places to visit. But that's the plan for this this winter to basically collect all that info and make it come together. Because I'm sure that, um, of course, all the people here have all the answers to this already. So people upstarts like us can go actually develop a product that is real. So the concept being, it's a it's a what we're looking at is a kilowatt um, bump valve uniflow high compression engine. So run it. Possibly pretty efficiently. Goal would be like maybe 10 to 15 percent <coughs> efficiency, and we go through the other parts that we work on. It's, it's going to be an open project, which we allow everybody to contribute to. We'll publish the plans openly, and what we also promote is open business models, which means that we're we're documenting not only the technology but the, the business model, how you produce it, the fabrication aspects, fabrication optimization, and then CNC fabrication, download the plans, machine the parts yourself as well, that kind of stuff, which could have a, uh, we can give the information away for, for, for free, we can sell the product, and our goal would be about 500 bucks for the hardware, for a complete system, and perhaps 500 bucks for fabrication, if we're going to say sell this, say sell this for a thousand bucks for this off grid generator. So, um, Bob? If you're going to do that, you should use the waste heat from the engine to heat your house, heat hot water, and run absorption, refrigeration, and air conditioning, and don't waste anything but the noise. <laughs> okay. Uh, you say? <laughs> I just I just want to tell you since since you are making a video of this, I want to tell your future investors that you got the right track, you went to the experts first. And, that is, <laughs> and that's what's gonna sell that. It's like our problem typically is okay, we're proposing stuff, but it's hard to find the people that know know this stuff. And this is a gold mine right here, it's the most amazing thing. You mentioned, a, you mentioned a bump valve engine and you mentioned 15%. Yeah. Those two things don't really quite go together. Okay. Yeah, that's we'll that's to... really a misnomer. Okay. 15% is hard to get. I think we'll have to talk to people who actually know about it. <laughs> okay. Have you hooked up the microcontroller to a solenoid yet to see the timing and how well that opens and closes? Uh, actually, we have. But in a totally different app application, that is the, the compressed earth brick press that we're using. Okay. Now, in that, we only need to do that once every second or so. But uh, we're actually using the same controller and solenoid valves, hydraulic solenoids, for the automatic compressed earth brick press that we produce. So we've got that experience. 
that tells us this is quite easy, and when you're going to do some kind of a fast solenoid, but don't don't use the hydraulic components. Just use a separate solenoid that's heat heat protected from whatever your little piston valve or whatever that will be there. So no, we haven't done any other relevant really relevant tests yet. Thank you, Marchand. Okay.